right, hello and welcome to another Sales Expert Insight. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And I'm delighted today to be joined by Justin Cohen, who is in Cape Town, South Africa. Hello, Justin. Great to be with you, John. Yeah, so it's it's still mid-morning here in San Diego. It's uh, well into the evening, 7.30, I think, there in Cape Town right now. It is indeed. Yeah. So uh, Justin is an author, international speaker, and he, he indeed TV presenter, does a show on CNBC Africa, um, really talking about uh, ex interviewing experts, um, sales and management leadership experts. And what we want to talk today a little bit about is what Justin's approach to selling, his idea of pitch to win. So he has this six-step process that he um, teaches people how to use. And I thought today would be interesting for us just at a very high level to get an idea of what is the pitch to win process, Justin? Well, you know, John, firstly, i got to tell you, I never saw myself teaching this. Mm -hmm. I, I never really saw myself as a sales trainer. Uh, I, my, my mission is to equip and inspire people and organizations to realize their potential. Mm -hmm. And I've written various books and programs. And what I quickly began to realize was that you could have a great offering, but if you did not know how to sell and pitch it, it wasn't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so I really developed this program for myself. Uh, I was frustrated with going in, you know, feeling that I had the best offering. And I'm sure anybody out there, you know, has been there, you know, where you, you go in, you, you, you do a pitch, you do a sell, convinced you, you, you done a good job of it and that you've got a good offering and that when you see who ends up getting it, you realize that in many cases, it's not because they had a better offering. Mm -hmm. It was because they had a better pitch, quite right. frankly. Mm -hmm. And so the way I saw it is if I didn't get this figured out, I would not be able to fill my mission on this planet. And so that is why I did this. And, uh, I started to apply it and my own personal results exploded. I pitched and won my own show on CNBC Africa. My international speaking career exploded. And again, I never really saw it something that I would share until I got a call from IBM. Now, IBM run one of the biggest uh, right. entrepreneurship competitions in the world. It's called Smart Camp. And uh, it happens all over the world. And the African winners of the competition, a little company from Kenya called Moday, ended up winning. And then afterwards, IBM said, listen, these guys, uh, they need some help. Will you will you work with them for a day? So I'd never done anything like that before. But I thought, well, you know, I've, I've got this approach that I use myself. Let's apply it. So uh, spent a day with them. They landed up going to Brazil to the semifinals, went off to New York City, and uh, the, the presiding was Mayor Michael Bloomberg at the time. Mm -hmm. And these guys landed up winning the entire competition, right. beating many more established startups from Europe and from the United States. And they were kind enough to give this method some of the uh, credit in that win. And still, I never thought of sharing it until one of my corporate clients called, that's uh, EY, one of the big four accounting firms. And, and similarly, they said, listen, we've got these guys. They've got to go and do a big pitch. Um, I, by the way, do a keynote presentation sure. called What's Your Story? So that's how these guys knew about me. Mm -hmm. And I was speaking at their uh, Pan-African conference. And similarly, afterwards, they said, listen, would you work with these guys and apply the story stuff? And then I was, I was, I was a little nervous. You know, now I was going to work with accountants, and accountants aren't known as being the most scintillating communicators. Very true. Uh, of course, what I realized was just like you and I, they have to sell. You know, mm -hmm. most people don't think of themselves as salespeople, but everybody's a salesperson. Yeah. We've all got to move what it is that we do, whether we're selling our team, whether we're selling our kids on doing their homework. I mean, selling is influence, right? We know that. But I, I was wondering, would this actually work? Would these guys actually have to go and do a, a formal sales presentation, a pitch? Could they do it? But remember, I had this formula, six steps. I thought, let's just apply a formula. They went in, did the pitch, and the audit committee afterwards stood and applauded, which I wow. understand is a, a first for auditors. Yeah. And that's when I realized you know, that this, uh, these guys uh, were able to apply the recipe. This notion of innate sales ability, the born salesperson, like, do you have to be born to be a salesperson? Sure, you've got to be born. But actually, <laughs> we all have the capacity if we're able to apply the formula. And this notion of, of, of the natural salesman being this kind of extrovert, and in fact, we know now that's in fact not the case. Yeah. You know, that, that, that anybody can be a great salesperson, extrovert, introvert, if you've got a formula, you apply it, you can win. 
So what was the first step in, in this for me? What was the first major kind of light bulb moment you had about why maybe you weren't being as successful as you wanted to be? What was the first thing you thought that's holding you back? Well, the secret sourcing pitch to win is actually storytelling. Mm -hmm. And I had written a book called The Astonishing Power of Story. And story is a is something that can be used for learning and development. In fact, that's how I traditionally teach it. I learn it culture building within organizations, sharing success stories. The other word for story is case study. And what I started to do was apply story to sales and marketing. And uh, this is, you know, most people are going in and selling are just giving abstract facts. Maybe, right. maybe you know, you, unfortunately, we often make the mistake of doing only features. But even if you're just, even if you're doing features and benefits, it tends to be this list of features and benefits. And what I started to do was actually give real life examples. And that's really, again, what a story is. I mean, sometimes people think story is kind of a soft and fluffy concept, but a story is a case study. So when you share a real example of how your product or service has benefited or how not having your product and service has led to some pain, uh, that's essentially what happens here. In fact, one of the things that I do, and perhaps we can even do it in this interview, is I give the exact same sales pitch, first as what I call a dead story, which is just abstract facts and figures, sure. and then as what I call a living story, which is a real life example. And immediately the audience just sees, they just get it. Like, it, it, it's a no-brainer. We've got to be telling more stories. So that really became the heart of the six-step process. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I love what you're talking about here because, obviously, if you look back historically um, through um, any culture, right, storytelling is is fundamental to the way culture you know, passes down information and puts things in context. And, you know, as humans, you know, we're not very good at processing random abstract concepts, are we? We need them woven together right. a little bit. Um, so then you decided, okay, storytelling. So how did how do you make sure, how did you make sure that, you know, there's a tendency you could go too far with storytelling, right? I mean, you could start to meander. How do you keep your storytelling kind of on point? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. And, and one of the things I think we have to be careful about, you, you know, a, a man with a with a hammer thinks every problem is a nail. Right. You know, I, and I can tell you that there's times when you shouldn't be telling a story. You know, if they come in and they, they're ready to buy and they just want to know the price, sell it, you know, <laughs> hand it over. So it's so sometimes people think, oh, okay, the story thing's so powerful, I've always got to be telling stories. No, we need to, and, and of course we can tell stories. And by the way, we all tell stories. I call us the homo historians, the species who tell stories. Stories. That's what we do. We're very comfortable. What I, I I do provide a method. It's a very simple method. But the truth is, we what I do probably primarily is give people permission to tell those stories. But right. to your point, how do we keep it simple? Yes, there is a method. The key thing for me, and I've got a sort of three step process, is what is your take home point? What do you want them? I mean, this is the critical thing on any pitch. What do you want them to know above all else at the end of your pitch? One thing. That's the other thing. We come in with so much information. People forget 90% of what we say. Mm -hmm. So if we understand what that main point is, then what we do is we build the story to make that point. Right. Now, we often say just get to the point, but sometimes we're trying to get the point, we lose the point. What the story does is it provides the fuel. It provides the engine. It, it moves that point. And, and, it, and it makes it stick. Mm -hmm. And then I guess, um, you know, people remember the point because they remembered the story because it, it resonated with them in some way, the way it made them feel, you know, the way like people remember how you make them feel as opposed to what you say. And I think you're wrapping up the two yeah. there. So they're remembering what you say because they're remembering the story that was wrapped around it. Exactly. That's exactly right. And we, we know that people, if you from a speech, they will 60% of people remember the story, only about 5% of people will remember facts. Mm -hmm. So what they, if you're remembering the story, you will remember the key facts, because if the story is told correctly, it'll take you to that key fact. Uh, but stories are a marvelous way to uh, employ the key drivers of persuasion. You know, the drivers of persuasion, and there are, there are a few of them, but you know, one of them is social proof. While we're told that 80% of dentists use Colgate because we can't analyze the molecular structure of every toothpaste, so we told they do it. We go, well, if they do it, then, then it, if it works for them, it'll probably work for me. Right? right? That's the basis of a testimonial. By the way, testimonial is a short story. Mm -hmm. uh, so, 
So, so by sharing the story of somebody who's had that benefit, and I go, well, if, and if you tell the story and it correctly links with me, then I go, well, if it works for them, it'll probably work for, if it works for them, it's probably going to work for me. And the other key thing that stories use is that overcome the reactance effect. You know, we don't wake up on a Saturday morning and say, I want to go to the mall today and I want to be sold. Nobody wants to be sold, right? And that's the reactance effect. We don't like being told what to do. This is why hard selling doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You, you, even, you know, there's three ways to get something done. One, do it yourself. Two, pay someone. Three, forbid your teenagers, right? <laughs> Tell a teenager, don't do this, and it's the very thing they want to do. There's a teenager inside every single one of us, right? If you're telling me what to do, just even when it's in my interest, I will often do the opposite. So what the story does is if you tell it well, you, you'll get to the point you don't even have to tell them to buy. It puts them in the buyer zone. They go, wow, that's really cool. That worked for them. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to work for me, right? So we don't go and say we want to be sold, but we do wake up and say I want to go to the mall today and I want to buy stuff. And that's what it does. It gets you – it gets – them to make that decision without you telling them to make it. Yeah. And I think the other the other uh, key component here is, especially in um, B2B purchasing, right, there's a lot riding on a personal leave for a buyer, right? Um, when I'm making a purchasing decision on behalf of my company, because it can be career enhancing, it can be career limiting, <laughs> depending on the outcome of that purchase. So I guess right. in a lot of ways, by, yeah. te by telling success stories and and the way it works, you're making me feel a little more comfortable that, okay, you worked for other people. Other people took the plunge and everything worked out fine for them. Yeah, absolutely. That, 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 that's exactly right. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, that, it's that extrapolation that people make. The, the, the key, I would say, probably the biggest pitfall uh, with, with storytelling and sales in general is that people focus, and this is an irony, but they focus – too much on the solution and not enough on the problem. Mm -hmm. And this is the key thing. What people don't realize, and if you just reflect, you'll see all stories are about adversity, difficulty, problems. The truth is if there's no problems, we're not in sales, there's no business. We are in the problem-solving business. So if you focus exclusively on the solution, nobody ever went, my life and business are fantastic, now let me pay you to change it, mm -hmm. right? But when they can feel, and it's that old expression, sell to the pain. Mm -hmm. So when you highlight that pain and then show how you have solved it or will solve it or how not having your product leads to more pain, then I'm going to be motivated. Here's the thing. We're twice as motivated to reduce pain as we are to increase pleasure, twice as motivated. So sometimes I, I say to my, my uh, delegates, you know, you kind of you have to kind of be a bit of a sadist about this because yeah. you actually need to get people into pain to get them to buy. But it's a good thing because they often don't realize the pain that they're in or will be in, right? So you're highlighting that and preventing further pain. But to do that, you've got to, you've got to focus on that problem. Yeah, no, I love it. There's an old saying in, in martial arts uh, where it says, you know, pain is your greatest teacher, but nobody wants to show up for his class. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk yeah. a little let's talk a little bit about you mentioned earlier the difference between dead stories. Um what what's a dead story? Well, tell me, let me give you an example. Yeah. Now, I mean, I would usually do this with slides, sure, and, sure. but the truth is that it's it's, it's not I, I think we'll get the point. So let me give you the exact same uh, 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 message first as a dead story and then as a living story. Now, I, I probably need to contextualize this. I'm going to be selling in this example mm -hmm. uh, private health care. Okay. Now, private health care, I guess in the United States, uh, people get the importance of that more than they do in, in Europe. Certainly in places like South Africa, it's really imperative to have because right. the public health care system just isn't good enough. And I guess even, you know, even in the UK yeah. today, I guess you could probably be selling it in this way because the, 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 the national health is, is, uh, is not, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to give you quite, but the point is that this yes. works really in a country where there is that there is a need for private health care. Okay. Right. So if I, so, so the traditional way to set, to sell it, uh, particularly to a young person might be to say, you know, private health care is really important. Everybody should have it, uh, even young people, because if you come down with an unexpected disease, you may have both uh, medical, physical problems and financial problems. So really, it's important to get good private health care. 
mm-hmm. riveting stuff, yes. as I always say, right? <laughs> I mean, that, it's just, you, a, just, you just can't wait, yeah, right? And, and, as a, and as a, if I was still a young person, I'm there going, yeah, but I'm a young person. None of that's going to happen to me. Well, exactly. Exactly. Great point. Now, what I'd normally do at this point is I'd show a picture of the brain, because if you look at activation in the brain, when you look at when you tell a story like that, it, there's very little activation mm-hmm. because it's you're not there's not it's not visual. It's not emotional. Uh, you don't uh, you don't you, you, you don't engage and get involved in the story. And we'll come back to that because this is also what makes stories so powerful as a sales tool. But now let me give you the exact same message, but as a living story. So. My friend Howard was just 26 years old when he noticed these red flecks in his urine. And he was a sportsman and he assumed it was just a little injury and it would go away, but it didn't go away. Eventually, he went to see a doctor. Uh, doctor didn't like what he saw, said he wanted to do some tests, did some tests, brought him back in, sat him down, said, Howard, I've got some tough news for you. You've got cancer, bladder cancer. At 26 years old, you're not supposed to get bladder cancer. That was bad enough. But the next thing he said is when Howard put his head in his hands and started crying, he said, Howard, we've got to get you into a good private hospital now. Let's get your private health care details. Howard never had private health care. It's a young, healthy guy. He just mm-hmm. never saw the importance. Fortunately, after many months of treatment, he did get better. But to pay for that treatment... He had to sell his apartment. To this day, he is still living with his parents. He has not recovered financially. Mm-hmm. The biggest cause of bankruptcy in a country today is medical crisis. Mm. Okay, so Boom. now, so now as a young, as a young, per- as the fake young person here, um, I'm listening <laughs> to that. I'm listening to that, and I'm going, well, I'm 26. Um, and I don't want to live in my parents' basement for the rest of my life. Maybe I need right. to. Uh, maybe maybe I need to listen a little more. Exactly. Now, what's happening in your brain? And this again, I would put up some yes. some uh, anatomy images here because just to see it is startling. First, you had a visual image, the visual cortex of how it is, Doctor. By the way, we think visuals are all about powerpoints and all that mm-hmm. nonsense. The real visual are the visuals that are created in your prospect's mind, and you create those visuals. Yes, with your nonverbal communication, but with the words. And with that story, that's what you create the visual. So you've got the visual cortex, you've got the auditory cortex, you hear, you've got the uh, limbic system. This is the emotional part of the brain. Now, the most important part of the brain that is activated with storytelling is the mirror neuron network. Now, the mirror neuron network is that we essentially mirror the emotions of the people around us, but it's also where stories work. You know that feeling when you're watching a film and, and, and you become the hero, you're reading a book, you, you become that character and you, mm-hmm. you live it, you feel like you're living it. Mm-hmm. So in some sense, it wasn't really Howard. I'm telling you that story, in some sense, you were Howard, right? You, I mean, when I tell the story to audiences, you'll see guys that like they have this kind of moments, you know, where they, they actually <laughs> feel that pain of like what's going on down there yeah. because that's the way the mirror neuron network works. It's the way we empathize and connect, but you can't do it with dead facts. You can't do it with a story. So now what happens is, and this is the other key driver of persuasion with story, is sampling. You know, you, you're actually giving, you go into the supermarket, you get a sample, you increase buying by, by 90%. Here you're getting a sample of what it's like not to have the product. Right. You're getting a sample of that pain. Right. And so that's the mirror neuron network. So in terms of the brain activation, it's far more extensive. And that means it's memorable. That's your hippocampus. uh, That's the memory part of the brain is going to be activated to a far greater degree. Uh, You know, so dead story, living story with a living story. You you know, there's a sensory and emotional connection, which is what motivates us to take action. So and as you'll notice, I never even said biomedical aid at the end. Right, I didn't right. say buy we use it medical aid in Africa, but I never said buy private health care. I didn't have to say buy that's right, because you would make that decision yourself. Yeah, so and obviously, you know, one of the rule the greatest rules of communication is people believe conclusions they come to themselves over anything you're gonna tell them, right? And Exactly. And exactly. by the and by the end of that story, I'm coming to the conclusion about okay, maybe I shouldn't be as cavalier about my health, even though I think I'm young and healthy. But then so did Howard, right? 
Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. Great. This is great. So we're bumping up against the end of our time here, and we could probably talk for hours, but I wanted to give you a chance to tell the, the viewers a little bit more about yourself and how they can learn more about the Pitch to Win process and the, the programs you offer. Great. Thanks, Sean. I appreciate that. So, I mean, the best way to, to find out more about me is on my website, uh, www.justinpresents.com. I do regular webinars on pit, Pitch to Win, and these are sort of hour half webinars where I go extensively into the six keys. And then I do a two day program, uh, two sometimes depending on the client, three. So these programs happen generally in house. I work a lot within, gosh, all sorts of industries, financial services, insurance, uh, banking, creatives, obviously, who are going in and doing a lot of pitching. So, yeah, everything from private bankers who are just pitching one-on-one -on -one sure. to creatives who are going in to pitch on big projects. Uh, and then so I do a fair amount of coaching as well uh, with teams generally. And I like working with teams because there's, I do a lot in, in, in team dynamics as well. I've got a – my background is in psychology. Remember, I came to, to this – a little bit later so i bring in these team dynamics up because i've just seen so often the dynamics between the team have a huge impact on their ability to pitch and then we look at things like what i call big pitch temperaments you know how you control that fear of public speaking you know the fear of public speaking is greater is greater than the fear of death which means <laughs> that most people would rather be in the be in the in, in the casket than giving the eulogy um, but but i have a, also a background in stress management so it's about actually managing that nervousness channeling it into excitement and enthusiasm so uh, yeah a range of, of programs but i guess really the, the focus here is is pitch to win and uh, and if anybody you know has any more questions or would like more information yeah they can email me directly on justin at justinpresents.com yeah this was fantastic justin and i think uh, the biggest endorsement that you uh, gave here is the fact that you ha you help people with the pitch where auditors stood up and gave a standing ovation because <laughs> my dad uh, god rest him he was an auditor and uh, i can tell you i can see how that uh, that's quite an achievement <laughs> all right well you know that joe that's what i what i love about this is it is a recipe you know and, and i'll tell you something when your when, when when your meal is on the line what i've realized is you will take on the recipe and apply it and that's the beautiful thing you know this is there's nothing something really mysterious about this you know it's just take it on apply it and you can get the results yeah that's fantastic listen thanks again justin for joining us you know late in the evening in uh, in cape town south africa uh, my name is john golden sales pop online sales magazine pipeliner crm you know please subscribe to the channel comment on this video uh, and we look forward to hopefully talking to justin again pretty soon Excellent, John. Great pleasure to be with you and look forward to the next time. Yeah, thanks, Justin. Subscribe to salespop.net and to our YouTube channel, SalesPop. That way you'll always be kept up to date with all the latest and greatest in interviews. We'd also love to see you commenting too. Get involved in the conversation.